Welcome to Sarpy Outlook. I'm Peg O'Day Lippert. Our guest is State Senator Jeremy Nordquist. Welcome, Jeremy. Glad to be here today, Peg. Jeremy is at his second term representing South Omaha District 7 in the Nebraska Legislature. He serves on the Appropriations Committee and is the chair of the Nebraska Retirement Systems Committee. Jeremy is widely recognized as an advocate for the poor, the immigrant, and the underserved. He has made himself an expert on health care, particularly the Affordable Health Care Act. It is in that capacity that we invited him to be with us. Jeremy, although Obamacare, as the act is familiarly called, has been with us for a few years, it is still not fully implemented and perhaps is one of the most misunderstood and maligned pieces of federal legislation in recent memory. Would you please start by giving us a brief overview of the key components of the health care bill? Yeah, I, absolutely, Peg. I'd be happy to. And I think one of the important things to remember as we uh, talk about our, our health care system and talk about the implementation of the Affordable Care Act is for us to remember what our health care system looked like prior to its passage. We've kind of shifted our collective attention to the implementation of the ACA but a lot of us have forgotten about where our health care system was. We were losing uh, employer-sponsored coverage uh, across the country. In Nebraska, we were losing employer coverage faster than all of our neighboring states. Really? Our uninsured rate in Nebraska had gone from 9% to 14% in the previous decade, a 60% really? increase unaware of that. Uh, in our uninsured rate. Um, our prices across the country over the last decade had gone up over 114%, more than doubled. Uh, the, the cost of insurance and the cost of health care. So really, our, our health care system uh, is, is really not functioning at a very high level. And for all of those costs, we weren't getting very good outcomes. Um, so we need to remember that we're coming from a broken system that left a lot of people behind. And that's what the Affordable Care Act is really focused on, on addressing. First, uh, making sure that people can get coverage uh, either through the uh, individual marketplace um, there's credits to help small businesses uh, get coverage, also to protect um, consumers from insurance, uh, insurance company manipulation. Um, we've seen and heard stories of people who forgot to list a doctor's visit or a treatment. We even heard a story of a woman who put her, uh, ex got married, put her maiden name instead of her married name, and in all of those cases, the insurance companies rescinded the policies when the people got sick and needed the policies. Mm -hmm. So that all of these are, are issues that the Affordable Care Act uh, is attempting to address and, and does address. So we, we need to look at it in context of, of what's happened uh, so far with the Affordable Care Act, what's going to happen uh, in the coming months, and then, and then long-term issues that we need to continue to work on. Uh, in the short term, the issues that we've, uh, we've seen uh, successes are ready for consumers. Mm -hmm. um, first, no longer are, uh, are there lifetime limits on insurance. Um, we've heard stories nationally of two and three year olds with born mm -hmm. with very severe uh, uh, medical conditions that hit their lifetime limit mm -hmm. by, by, the age, by the age of two. That individual would be no longer insurable mm -hmm. uh, in, in the previous uh, health insurance marketplace, but because of the Affordable Care Act, they can now uh, get coverage. Um, we know that people up to the age of 26 can stay on their parents' health insurance plan, and certainly with the economy the way it's been. Um, it's important for those, uh, those young people who mm -hmm. haven't found stable employment with benefits that they can uh, stay on their parents' health insurance plan. In Nebraska, that's about 18,000 people have taken really? advantage of that. Really? That actually, for the first time in almost a decade, because of that provision, we've seen our uninsured rate on the decline mm -hmm. for the first time in, in, in quite a while. So that's a, a great uh, policy that we, should, we certainly should celebrate. Um, we, uh, we now, uh, there's a provision that's called the medical loss ratio, where insurance companies have to spend at least 80% mm -hmm. of those premium dollars that are paid in on health care, mm -hmm. on actually paying for health care. That means they can't spend it on corporate profits, on administrative overhead. It actually has to go to pay doctors, mm -hmm. nurses, buy prescription drugs. And those companies that don't meet that threshold have to okay. send rebate checks yes. out. And I actually, the first year, uh, received really? a rebate check. Really? Um, 
uh, in the state legislature, we don't get health care provided to us. We have to find our own, so I purchase on the individual market. And my insurance company only spent 75% of their dollars on health care, so I got a check for 5% of the premiums I paid in back. That is now all, uh, that is all taking effect, um, and that is helping bring down uh, insurance costs. And for our seniors, another provision that's already taken effect is the prescription drug donut hole has uh, begun to shrink and eventually mm -hmm. under the law will go away. Um, it's saving in Nebraska. We have uh, uh, several thousand seniors who have already on average saved uh, you know, about $600 a year on their prescription drugs. So those are very real, very meaningful uh, pieces that have taken effect uh, so far for uh, Nebraska families. Um, the next provisions, uh, set of provisions will go into effect January 1. Oh, January and, 1? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I thought Jan October. Well, so, we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So January 1 is when uh, in, the insurance, uh, uh, in the insurance industry, they'll have to start uh, covering. Um, there will be no more lifetime, uh, uh, no more annual limits. So lifetime limits are already gone away. Now there will be no more annual limits on how much your insurance can cover. So again, people with very serious conditions, you know, they're not going to bump up against uh, that annual mm -hmm. limit cap that prevents them from getting mm -hmm. the care that they need. Um, the biggest piece that goes into effect January 1, and it's really something that should be celebrated uh, across this country, is that no longer will someone be denied health insurance coverage because of a pre-existing condition. Whether you're a farmer in rural Nebraska or a child with autism or asthma, you will be able to get coverage and insurance companies will no longer be able to tell you no. So that is that is that is really the crux of the Affordable Care Act. Is that covered for children already? That is, yeah, it? that is so already covered So that's going to be an extension yep. Yep. So for adults January exactly right. 1. That's exactly that's right. right. So I think, I, you know, it, certainly there's a lot of political uh, hand-wringing about the Affordable Care Act, but I think most Nebraskans value uh, the idea that anyone, regardless of their health condition, should be able to get health coverage. Um, so that, that's a, a huge win for families and for children in the Affordable Care Act. So, to, so now that everyone um, can get coverage, a key is uh, the insurance companies, when the law was, was moved forward, they said, you got to make sure that, that people get that coverage because they can't just hop in and hop out because that that won't work financially mm -hmm. for us and that makes mm -hmm. sense it's mm -hmm. like how uh, insurance for your home you can't call up your house and your homeowner's insurance well, hail storms well, yeah well, the, <laughs> where the storms come and say hey i'd like to purchase yeah, insurance uh -huh. now mm -hmm. that that just doesn't make sense mm -hmm. so we set up uh, uh vehicles in the affordable care act for people to get uh insurance first with the small business tax credits which are uh, in effect, and companies are taking advantage of that right now. You know, Jeremy, I've heard complaints uh, of, about small business people that they have reduced the hours of their employees yeah. so they don't have to provide coverage. But doesn't that only apply to companies that's, that that's employ right. 50 people? That's right. They have to be large large companies of 50, 50 or more. Mm -hmm. And you know, we have heard uh, some stories, but we've also heard stories of companies that say, you know, we're going to be good corporate citizens and make okay. sure our, our employees get coverage. So I, I think that issue, um, uh, the conservative uh, media certainly has picked a few, mm -hmm. cherry-picked a few stories nationally. Mm -hmm. But I think well, that... Could you tell me on a, a company, for example, mm -hmm. McDonald's, yeah. you know, a lot of the sure. employees there yeah. are part-time. Yeah. But that surely doesn't just apply to the my little local McDonald's here, does it? Or is that a corporate? No, it, it, so it would be uh, on the corporate level yeah, if, if so. it's owned by... You know, if it's a franchise that's owned, and most McDonald's franchises or fast food have multiple locations, so it's the entire mm -hmm. system wide. Yeah, okay. for for the franchisee, I would, yeah. I would. That's think, what but, I yeah. would have assumed. Yeah. but I've heard complaints, you know, in that yeah. area. Yeah, the that's small right. business. That's right. Yeah. So to get um, to get access to coverage, there there really are a couple of vehicles. Um, the the biggest one that most people are going to be talking about is the insurance marketplace or the yes, exchange. Tell us about that. Yeah, and that that really kicks off here October first. Um, people will be able to go online to healthcare.gov or uh, call in if they don't have access to a computer at one eight hundred three one eight two five nine six is the is the online number. For is the, that a local state number? That is a, that is or the national, national call okay. center. It's available twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. Um, we also will have people in our communities called navigators, um, and our navigators in Nebraska are through our community action agencies. 
mm -hmm. um, and, and there's a number of those around the state. Their local number is 402-471-3714, and that is the local uh, community uh, action agency. They will be your local uh, voice on the ground. But if you call into the national number, the 800 number, mm -hmm. they will also help direct you in the right. The right so place. the 402 number would cover people in this area code, but there are other numbers to cover the rest of the state, that's right, that's right. which could yeah, be accessible right. through the 800 that, That's right, number. exactly, mm -hmm. or, or the website at, at healthcare.gov. Mm -hmm. So we decided in Nebraska, the governor decided mm -hmm. um, <laughs> largely to, to let the federal government set up an exchange for us. So there'll be a, so healthcare.gov is the site. States had the ability mm -hmm. to choose their own. Um, I thought it would be important for us to, to have our own exchange because we've seen now in states that have done their own exchange and really tried to drive competition into that exchange, that marketplace, we've seen lower premiums. Mm. Uh, in states like Oregon, California, New York, Minnesota, we've seen premiums as low, uh, subsidized premiums as low as $20 a month for, for young really? individuals. So really? it, it can be really affordable. Uh, Nebraska's rates aren't, aren't finalized yet, but um, they're gonna be you know, in, in the range of the current marketplace. Um, but ultimately, that competition of getting insurers into into the marketplace and selling the same product, they're all going to sell apples to apples. Oh, is it? It will so, be yep, equal. So, uh -huh. so um, how it's going to work is, is when you log on and set up your account, uh, you'll get a, a number of options from each. There'll be four, insurance, four insurers selling in our state, okay. uh, Blue Cross, uh, Coventry, um, there's a cooperative, which is a nonprofit cooperative plan that's based in Iowa, but it covers Iowa and Nebraska. And there's the, uh, the United Healthcare, probably. United is not actually. Oh really? They, they decided. The, oh really? And uh, they've decided in a number of states not to participate right away. Is that I think, interesting? and a few companies have decided to do mm -hmm. that. But you'll have four company options, and then some of them have slightly different uh, plans, but they all cover the same benefits. They all cover. Um, your your fam or your uh, physician visits, your hospitals, your prescription drugs, they all cover uh, youth uh, dental uh, for children right. is, a, is an essential health benefit. Mm -hmm. So if you get a family plan, that's covered. Um, so you'll know that you're you're shopping for the same stuff oh, when you helpful. go on. That's and helpful. then there'll be then you'll have the choice of how much insurance coverage do you want essentially. And they'll be broken up into four categories: bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. On the bronze plan, the insurance company will uh, will pay 60% uh, of the cost, and you will end up paying about 40% of the cost. Okay. So when you go to the doctor and the hospital, when you but utilize the, the service, then will yeah, be at that level. yeah, so you'll have higher co-pays, mm -hmm. higher mm -hmm. deductibles. At the at the top end, uh, the more expensive platinum plans are 90% uh, on the insurer, 10% on you. So you'll get to choose, and obviously costs go up as mm -hmm. the coverage goes up, but you'll be able to choose what's comfortable for you, but you'll mm -hmm. know that those plans cover all the important pieces of health care. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, the other thing that's important to remember is that there will be a tax premium, uh, a tax subsidy. If, if, you, uh, if you make less, as a family of four, if you make less than $92,000 a year, you'll qualify for a tax subsidy. So our Department of Insurance in Nebraska estimates that about 90% of the people going on the exchange, if they, if they don't have employer coverage, will be able to get some subsidy, subsidy. help. So, uh, mm. it, Is that it by way of a tax credit? Yeah, it's an advanceable tax credit. Advanced. So, so okay. it, it calculates it all right there, and it'll deduct it right there. And then at the end of the year, uh, when you do your taxes, there's some documentation that, that you need to sh show that you had coverage for the year so you don't have to pay the penalty. But the, the credit is advanced when you per okay. make the purchase. So I don't I don't need to wait till the end of no, the year to right. get my money that's right. back because that would make it prohibitive perhaps that's right. today. That's exactly right. So it's up front. The money's the subsidies there every month when you oh, really? Yeah. So you enter in your income and it, it calculates calculates yeah. your subsidy. So th amount. does that uh, does the federal government then pay that subsidy to the to insurance the insurer, company yep. and then it comes off my yep. tax credit at so the when end you of the go year. when you go yep that, that's that's it. so when you go to pay uh, you'll you'll give them your method of payment uh, the government the, the subsidy amount will be there and then uh, whatever's left you'll pay with your method of payment so okay. uh, um, so that's how the subsidies will work and uh, there was just a report released um, that shows about 60 percent of the people uh, going on the exchange this is a national number about 60 percent with their subsidy uh, Sixty percent of the people will pay a hundred dollars or less for their really? insurance. Really? So it um, it really is going to help uh, working folks 
uh, and, and help um, help individuals afford health insurance. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that, Jeremy, because I've, again, and I don't typically listen to the other side on the news, but uh, the general impression is that these premiums are still going to be quite costly yeah. for people and that how, you know, the yeah. question then is how is that different yeah. than people who couldn't afford to buy individual yeah. coverage before? Sure. Well, the, the key pieces that are that are going to be taking effect over the next couple of years are, one, the market competition of getting all those insurers, um, putting all their prices on there, much like you go shop for an air, airplane ticket or you go shop for something on Amazon. You're able to compare this product and its mm -hmm. quality and its value to you and its price versus this product mm -hmm. that was never available really before in insurance. Mm -hmm. you well, had and to, so complex to yeah, figure yeah, it you out. Really, you could work through an agent, but in the individual market, it really wasn't mm -hmm. um, that easy to compare. Mm -hmm. We are now going to have real transparency in prices and real competition in prices. The other thing that, that's going to bring down prices, um, and unfortunately, we're, we haven't taken full advantage of, the, of, of this performance. We haven't taken it, taken this provision at all, um, but getting more people coverage will bring down prices. Surely, um, we can talk about Medicaid expansion in a minute. That's probably the biggest piece. Mm -hmm. But even getting this uh, several million nationally uninsured people to purchase through the exchange, those are people that no longer will be going to the emergency mm -hmm. room without mm -hmm. coverage. Mm -hmm. We know that people who go to the emergency room utilize services. The cost of those services are spread around to everyone else who has, um, who has coverage, and then that gets put into our premiums. Mm -hmm. um, the average family pays about eleven $1 hundred dollars a year extra in their premium to make up for that that mm -hmm. cost shift that's going on mm -hmm. in their health care system. Mm -hmm. So the more people we take out of the emergency room, we reduce that cost shift. That's going to start helping control the cost of health care and bringing down our, our health care costs. Which is really a plus for the insurance companies, uh, too, is, something that's is. often overlooked. And, and hopefully, it's not a yeah. government plan. It's, no, that's it's, right. That's right. It's the marketplace. Yeah. Yes. And because of the medical loss ratio, uh, when the insurance companies save mm -hmm. and they have to spend 80% of their dollars on health care, mm -hmm. You know that cost ultimately should get shifted back to the mm -hmm. consumer and, and be a savings for Inter consumer. Interesting. Yeah, but unfortunately, we haven't uh, taken advantage of the full uh, Affordable Care Act because we have not um, we have not expanded Medicaid in Nebraska. Um, we're we're continuing to work on it. We have a number of thoughtful which would have picked up some of those lower end That's income right. people. That's right. right. Um, in Nebraska, it probably uh, we would start at about fifty thousand individuals, and and eventually mm -hmm. it would grow to about a hundred thousand individuals. These are people who are working minimum wage jobs at our favorite restaurant, at our favorite mm -hmm. retail store. Um, you know, these are I, I, one story that sticks out in my mind is a, a mom from Lincoln who visited my office. She has multiple sclerosis. She has two children. She just is not capable uh, physically of maintaining a high level of full-time employment. Mm -hmm. She falls into this gap now, and the problem is it is really a gap. Um, a lot of people, even legislators, have a misunderstanding that, oh, if you're poor or you're a minimum wage worker, you can qualify yeah, for Medicaid yeah, already. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It, it, it does not work that way. If, you're, if you have no children or, or if you're an empty nester, you know, you've mm -hmm. maybe lost your job during the recession, there's no coverage right. option for and you. And not old enough for Medicaid. That, that's exactly right. And there's a lot of or people. Or disabled. There's a lot of people like that, mm -hmm, exactly. So The um, young adult working. Yeah, uh, that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when I talked about the, the, the exchange and the subsidies, the subsidies only come down to 100% of poverty, which for an individual is about $14,000 a year. Um, below that, there's there's no coverage without Medicaid expansion. And without at children in the home. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And even if they do have children, it, it, it's, it's, there's still a gap. Um, they'll cover, mm -hmm. if you have children, they'll give you Medicaid coverage if you make up to about $6,000 a year. So okay. between six and 14, there's, there's still a gap. So we're leaving, we're going to leave about 54,000 people uninsured uh, in, Nebraska. in Nebraska, and they're going to continue to use the system that mm -hmm. the way they always have, mm -hmm. go to the ER, those costs get shifted back to everyone else, and it keeps our, our costs high. Um, I was at a conference a while, uh, a couple weeks ago, and the president of the, the umbrella organization for all the health insurers in the country, it's called the America's Health Insurance Plans, mm -hmm. she said, states that don't expand Medicaid will have higher rates than they otherwise would because that cost shift is still in the system. So uh, if we want to see lower health care rates in Nebraska, we've got to expand mm -hmm. Medicaid. 
The good news is we clearly have a majority of the state legislature that wants to do it. Oh, really? But um, unfortunately, there's a filibuster going on, and the governor opposes it. We got we need 25 for a majority, which will pass that. We need 30 for a governor's veto. I think we're getting close to that oh, number. Really? So that we will need, come up again. We need 33 to oh, to to Override. get get cloture to shut off debate. Uh -huh. um, and we're there's enough open minds that I think we can get there. Um, but it's certainly gonna ha we're gonna have to hear from. Um, constituents uh, all mm -hmm. across the state to, to reach out to their well, legislators. Will there probably not be enough evidence by the time the next session of the legislature well, to I, prove I, yeah. that that really makes sense? Yeah, well, I'm hopeful that looking that we've seen a lot of other states come up with innovative ideas, mm -hmm. Iowa and Arkansas, we've just heard. Mm -hmm. um, Pennsylvania uh, is, is going to do Medicaid expansion. Michigan, a number of states with conservative Republican governors. Oh, interesting. Uh, Jan Brewer, you know, a very, very strong <laughs> uh -huh. Tea Party uh, governor uh -huh. in Arizona uh, pushed through Medicaid expansion because she realizes that it makes fiscal sense. Mm -hmm. And here's here's the, the big piece, and um, r really, especially in, in rural Nebraska, without this, our hospitals are going are gonna to be hurting. Um, part of the Affordable Care Act, to pay for the subsidies and Medicaid expansion, they eliminated a program, or they're going to be eliminating a program called disproportionate share for hospitals, and that was money that went to hospitals that served a lot of uninsured or served mm -hmm. a lot of Medicaid and Medicare mm -hmm. to help them keep their doors open. Mm -hmm. Well, the deal was, we'll give you Medicaid expansion, cover all these people, okay. and now you don't need this program anymore. Well, the program's going away uh -oh. no matter what. So our hospitals oh, so in Nebraska that, okay. are going to see about forty million dollars a year reduction in that disproportionate share. And in rural, in rural Nebraska especially, that's really going to hurt them. There's been studies that show, in, you know, if you look at the numbers in Nebraska, maybe as many as 15 hospitals really? could close without this Oh, Jeremy, that, this that helps me understand yeah. that conversation about it's, how yeah. it's going to affect yeah. hospitals. Yeah. I didn't understand yeah. that. So, so that was the option. That's right. That's now, right. tell me, what if it made a difference if Nebraska legislature had chosen to, to do or the governor had uh, agreed to do our own exchange? Would have that made a difference um, the, in some of these coverages? Um, uh, in the exchange, uh, the, the, the only difference really is who kind of who runs it, and you get a set. And who of, you can blame if it doesn't work. <laughs> that's yeah. true, too. And you get a set some of the parameters uh, of competition. And mm -hmm. the states that have taken it on and said, we're going we're gonna to try to maximize competition for our consumers, for our constituents, have seen prices be much mm -hmm. lower than states that have just said, We'll let the federal government run it, and it, it, the federal uh, one will will operate fine. Mm -hmm. But it's just kind of one size fits all. There aren't mm -hmm. a lot of um, pieces because in in Nebraska we have three big insurers. We have Blue Cross, Coventry, and United that uh -huh. really dominate our marketplace. Mm -hmm. You know, I would like to see as much competition in that marketplace Surely. as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and and unfortunately, we're not there yet. But mm -hmm. I think we can look at moving uh, policies forward. Although the last thing I want to bring up on Medicaid expansion is the federal government pays for, for that expansion 100% for three oh, years. That's, that was the rub. Yeah, and then, and then after that, it phases down. The state pays mm -hmm. 10%. So 10 mm -hmm. cents on the dollar is all we got to pay to cover, to cover mm -hmm. this population. Uh, over, over the next um, 10 years, our, our fiscal office, office in the legislature, which is nonpartisan, says the cost is about $50 million for the state but we'll bring in, in federal dollars, $2.5 billion um, over the next 10 years. That's money that would go to our hospitals to hire oh. doctors, to hire nurses, um, to make sure we have a system that will care for Accommodate all of these people. The exactly. Uh -huh. Without it, there's no way we're ever going to have a system that can serve all Nebraskans. So um, it, it really is leaving a, a, a big benefit on the table. I guess we could have a whole other conversation right. about... Uh, why is this so, you yeah, know, that's uh, right. it, it just is, it seems a little short-sighted, right. I, I might right. add. Uh, golly, uh, this, this has been so informative. Is there anything else that we need to hear about this, uh, J Jeremy? Yeah. Well, I'll just, I'll just uh, remind people that um, starting October 1st, uh, they can s begin signing up if they don't have insurance uh, through their employer. They can begin signing up uh, at healthcare.gov. And they can sign up any time between October 1st and the end of March is the cutoff okay. for the first year. Um, if you sign up before January 1, your coverage can start January 1. Um, and again, it, it, it is comprehensive health insurance. 
if, if you make as a family of four below 90000 a year, um, you, can, you can get support to purchase that, that coverage. Um, and again, that, it's healthcare.gov. The local number, if you're looking for help, is 402-471-3714. Um, and, and I encourage, uh, encourage all the listeners to help get that word out to, to any of their neighborhood groups, church groups, um, uh, and, and neighbors in, the, in their neighborhood who have questions about it, point them to healthcare.gov, uh, and there'll be answers for them there. Well, thank you so much, Jeremy, for your time. And on behalf of the Sarpy County Democrats, I want to thank you for your leadership, your dedication, and your expertise. Okay. And I personally, having followed you since college <laughs> graduation, am so proud of you and your faithfulness uh, to your beliefs. That's nice of you to say. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you.